Yesterday, my two-year-old was playing with a book that has you connect a color to a fruit, and I realized that would be the perfect feature to demonstrate drag and drop and flutter. In today's video, we'll build this simple kids game that allows you to drag a fruit over to a square with the corresponding color. If you drop it on the correct square, it will update the score and also give you some audio feedback. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can find the full source code on Fireship.io. Now before we get started, a lot of people have asked me when I'm going to release a full Flutter course. The answer is very soon. It'll be released before Google I.O., which is now only six days away, so expect more details on that in the next few days. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the app we're building today. You'll see two columns here, and you can grab an item from the column on the left and then drag it to a target on the right. If it's the correct color, it will mark it as correct and then update the score. But if it's dropped on the incorrect target, then it will just go back to its original position. And then we'll also randomize the ordering of the targets for each round, just so there's a little bit of replay value. And as an added touch, we'll play a little sound effect every time the user makes a successful drop. If we jump into the code, the first thing we'll look at is the pubspec YAML file. The only dependency outside of Flutter is this audio players plugin. I really like this plugin because it works on both iOS and Android and also allows you to play multiple audio files simultaneously. And that tends to be pretty important if you're building a game. And you'll also notice that we have an MP3 file here registered in the assets directory. And I've also registered a custom font called Press Start, which you can download from Google Fonts that'll give you that kind of pixelated retro look. Now moving on to the source code, I'm importing Dart Math as well as the Audio Players plugin. Then we'll update the font family in our theme data, and then we'll set the home page as this color game screen that we're about to define now. The screen itself is a stateful widget, and the first property we'll define is the score, which just starts out as an empty map. Eventually we'll update the keys on this map when the user drags a draggable widget onto the correct drag target. The next thing we'll define is a map of choices, and so each emoji, which is a string, will map to a material color. Emojis are really handy because they not only provide a graphic that we can use for the UI, but we can also use them to organize the game logic itself. For example, if the user correctly drags to the green square, then we can update the score with the corresponding emoji key. We'll also define an integer here called seed, which will be used as a random seed to shuffle the order of the items as we loop over them. And then we'll use the audio cache class to play a local MP3 file, and we'll call that our audio controller. From there, we'll set up a scaffold, and in the app bar for that scaffold, we'll display the score, and then we'll have a floating action button that allows the user to reset the game. We can display the score by setting up a text widget, and then to calculate the score, all we have to do is look at the length of that score map. And you can use the dollar sign brackets to interpolate an expression directly inside of a string in Dart. Now, the purpose of the floating action button is to reset the game. So in order to do that, we'll call set state and then we'll clear out all of the key value pairs inside of that score map. And we also want to add some randomness after each game, so we'll increment our random seed by one. That takes care of the outer UI. Now we'll set up a row that has two columns laid out side by side, the draggable stuff on the left with the drop targets on the right. So the first column in the row will take care of the draggable widgets, and we'll want each of our six choices to be a draggable widget. So we'll go ahead and loop over the keys in the map. And if you remember from earlier, each key in that map is just an emoji string. Now we're ready to start using Flutter's draggable widget, which allows the user to drag a child widget around the screen. Now there are three different things you might want to display with a draggable widget. The first one is just the default child, which is what will be displayed when the user is not interacting with it. When the user starts to drag, that will open the door to two additional UI elements. The initial child disappears, and then we have this feedback widget, which is what is actually being dragged around the screen. And then we also have the option to define a child when dragging widget, which will be displayed to replace the original child when it's being dragged. Now getting back to our code, there's one important thing I want to point out here, and that's that if you're passing data from a draggable widget to a drop target, you should provide it with a generic type that represents the data that you're passing to the drop target, which in our case is just a string. Then to actually pass the data, we'll go ahead and define the data property as our emoji. Now at this point, we're ready to define the three different widgets, which include again, the child, the feedback, and the child when dragging. Now, depending on your UI, this may be a good opportunity to refactor your code into a different widget. In our case here, all three of these widgets are very similar. So we'll go ahead and define a new stateless widget called emoji that takes a string emoji as an input. Then down here in the build method, I'll start by defining a material widget. And the reason I'm starting with this material widget is because for whatever reason, the draggable feedback doesn't seem to want to inherit the text styles from the main app. And then the rest of it is just very basic Flutter stuff like a container that's aligned to the center that has a specific height and width. But because we extracted this logic into its own stateless widget, we can now reuse it three times up in the draggable widget in a very dry and maintainable way. 
So we can use our emoji widget up here as the child. And when passing in the actual emoji argument, we'll go ahead and check to see if that one's already been answered correctly. If it's been answered correctly, we'll just display a check mark. Otherwise, we'll display the emoji itself. For the feedback widget, we'll always just want to display the emoji, but you might want to add some box shadow or maybe make it larger here to give it the effect of being grabbed. And lastly, we can use the emoji widget as the child when dragging property as well. And that's all it takes to build a draggable widget. And there's also a number of different callbacks that you can listen to on draggable to handle different UI interactions based on the state of what's being dragged. But in many cases, you want to drag something to a specific location and have it interact with a different widget, which we can do with a drop target. In our case, we're going to build multiple drop targets, and each one of those targets corresponds to a specific emoji that is allowed to be dropped on top of it. We'll go ahead and loop over the keys in the choices map again, but this time I'm going to define a function called build drag target that will build the widgets for each individual drop zone. Then I'm going to call dot dot shuffle with our random seed, and that will randomize the order of the items in this list. The two dots here are called Cascade Notation and Dart, and they allow you to make a sequence of operations on the same object. In this case, Shuffle doesn't actually return the array, it just mutates the original. So without the Cascade Notation, we'd have to create a temporary variable just to shuffle the array, which would take a few more lines of code. That's just one of the many ways that Dart makes life a little bit easier for you. Now we're ready to define the actual drag target, and we'll want to make sure to pass in the generic string type here for the data type that we're dropping on top of this target. The next thing we'll do is define its builder function, which gives us access to the build context, a list of accepted data, and a list of rejected data. We can use that data to determine how the UI should look for the drag target. Now in our case, we're keeping track of the score on the parent stateful widget, which means we can just look at the score map for this particular emoji to determine which UI elements to show. If the user's already answered this one correctly, then we'll just display a white container that has the text of correct. But if the user has not answered this one correctly, then we'll go ahead and display a container that has the corresponding color to that emoji. And again, that data is contained in the choices map, which we defined at the beginning of the video. But how do we know whether or not a user has actually dropped something on the drag target and whether or not that's valid data to be dropped there in the first place? We can decide if the data is valid or not by defining this on will accept function. This will fire when the user drags something on top of the target. So in our case, we can look at the data or the emoji string and make sure that it matches the emoji of this particular widget. In other words, you should only be able to drop the tomato on the red drop zone. That'll fire when the user first hovers over the drag target. But when they actually drop the item and it's accepted, it will fire this on accept function. And we also have on leave if it's dropped and it's not accepted or if they just leave the drop zone altogether. When the user makes a successful drop, we'll go ahead and call set state and update the score on the stateful widget. In addition, we can also play a sound here, which we can easily do with our audio controller by calling play and then passing it the name of our MP3 file. And that's all there is to it. We now have a fully functional drag and drop UI. And I think the only possible way to make it better would be to add in some annoying mobile ads, but we'll save that for another episode. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe and consider becoming a pro member at Fireship.io to get access to the upcoming Flutter course. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon. I choose chunky style milk because it has the wholesome chunks growing kids need.